I think that Magneto is one of the strongest Marvel Champions heroes in the game, but I don't actually think all of his cards are super great. So let's talk about it. Welcome to Nelson Oliver Cards. My name is Nelson and today we are doing a solo review of the newest hero in Marvel Champions, Magneto. Now I say solo review meaning one hero at the table. So this will change in multiplayer and we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end of the video, but throughout until I say this is the multiplayer, this is all evaluating through a one hero at the table true solo lens. So let's just dive in and talk about his alter ego side. Well, in alter ego, Eric has a six hand size, three recovery, and a response that triggers after he flips into alter ego form called Survivor, where you can shuffle the top three cards of your discard pile back into your deck. This creates some super fun sequencing plays because you want to play your cards in a way that when you flip down, you can recur the cards that you most need for that point in the game. It could be like magnetic cards that trigger off of his hero ability. You could uh, recur doubles to boost his economy, get multiple double plays every single deck pass. Or if you just lost a great ally like a, a Nick or a Professor X, throw them back into your deck and you get them another time. It's like having two copies in your deck. It's really, really good and it's a very fun puzzle. The recursion does not actually stop here. We have a two cost alter ego support called Asteroid M. You can exhaust Asteroid M to heal one damage and shuffle the topmost magnetic card in your discard pile into your deck. So you can trigger Survivor on your flip down and then Asteroid M twice, once on the turn you flip down and then on the turn you flip back up to recur five different cards every single time you flip down the Alter Ego, which can be awesome, especially when he has doubles in his own kit with that magnetic keyword. But we'll talk about that here in a second. This is also a fantastic complement to the one cost Weapon X support, which deals a damage to your Alter Ego and then you discard cards until you get a hero specific card. Because Asteroid M heals a damage, you get to, you know, basically get that card for no damage taken. And you know that you will have a hero card in your deck. Sometimes Weapon X whiffs because you don't have any hero cards left in your deck. With Asteroid M, you can guarantee that there is one. And when your deck is very thin, you can really kind of set up what you put back into the draw pile to manipulate the cards to get just what you need one more time as you deck out. Magneto has some pretty sweet alter ego synergies and they do not stop when you flip the card over to his hero side. In hero form, he has a 2-2-2 two, two, two stat line with five hand size, but that five hand size is a little bit deceptive because he has the magnetic pull ability where you get to discard cards from the top of your deck until you get a magnetic card and then add it to your hand. So pretty much always running with a six hand size in hero. And if you're on a turn where you're flipping from alter ego to hero form, Triggering Magnetic Pull, you get a 7th card. If you've Weaponed X, that's an 8th card. And his expensive kit gets much easier to stomach when you have 7, 8, or 9 cards in your hand. It's way easier to play the game when you have 8 cards in your hand. <laughs> the printed ability does have synergy with some of his upgrades in his kit. Like Magneto's Cape is a 2 cost upgrade that gives him the Aerial Trait, which is not an irrelevant trait. Very, very good trait to have. And it has a response that after you trigger the Magnetic Pull ability, you get the Ready Magneto. Readies are very good in Marvel Champions. With a 2-2-2 two, two, two stat line, it's a very flexible stat line. And so you're able to thwart multiple times and kind of handle threat on the table, or you can attack twice, deal out some damage. Or if you've pumped up some stats, maybe with like a Heroic Intuition or his armor upgrade, you can get a lot of value out of every single activation. So having a ready in your kit is very strong. But let's talk about the armor upgrade. It gives him a stat boost based on the resource icons that you discard from your deck with this action. So if you discard a mental, you get to ready with his cape, and then the mental discard gives him a plus one thwart until the end of the phase, or until the end of the round, so you can thwart again for three. So if you thwart for two, discard a mental, ready, thwart for three, that's five threat removal just off your basic activa activations. You have not spent any cards, you're actually up one card. And so, it's, it's kind of crazy. Once you get his cape out, he becomes so flexible and the armor just adds on to that. And that's without actually spending anything. You're actually getting stuff because you're adding that card to your hand. It, it's, it's a little silly. Um, I'm typically prioritizing his cape over the armor because I prefer the flexibility of a ready, but the armor is very solid to get out early too because it can really kind of help you clear up the board state. 
Next card in his kit is the Magnetic Bubble. It's another lovely card. This three cost upgrade gives Magneto retaliate and prevents a lot of damage because when he would take any amount of damage, you place it on the bubble instead. And then if there is six or more damage on the card, it gets discarded. This is really nice because you can go up to that limit, right next to the limit, and then take a huge hit. Because it's not saying once, as soon as six damage is on there, it's after you have assigned damage to the bubble, then you evaluate. So if you're sitting at five damage and you take a hit of 20, probably impossible, but say you do, you put all 20 damage on that bubble, then you check to see if it has more than six, it does, then it gets discarded. So you can prevent much more than just six damage with the bubble. And it is, mm, it's so satisfying to get it up to five, knowing that you're safe for one more hit. That last hit, you don't get the retaliate, but I'll still take a prevention of all that damage when I need it. We do have to be a little bit careful here because it is any source of damage that gets uh, put onto the bubble. It prevents any type of damage. So the bubble will make it so cards like Weapon X do not trigger because it prevents you from taking the damage. But that being said, if you can play around it, if you can manipulate the game state, um, it's a really good card. Um, and when it's on the table, you just have a lot of freedom, of flexibility, and safety. Just knowing that, you know, the villain's attacking you, you're going to be fine. And so I really like keeping this out the whole game. If we are kind of running into that defensive strategy, or we can just play it multiple times, recur it. Um, with our survivor ability or asteroid M and play it multiple times per deck pass. This can be your defensive strategy or it can lean into an already defensive strategy. So really flexible card, awesome. And if you have been keeping track, you've probably noticed that every single card so far has had the magnetic trait and spoiler alert, the rest of the cards in his kit also have this trait, which is awesome for his helmet, a three cost upgrade that generates a wild resource for any magnetic card. It's nice, especially because you're basically guaranteed to have a magnetic card every single turn with the magnetic pull ability. You're literally pulling magnetic cards from your deck. And so if you have this on the table, you're always going to have an option to trigger it. So if there are other resource generators out there, potentially like Iceman that generate cards or generate resources for ice cards, there's not always a guarantee you're going to have that ice card. With Magneto, you have the mechanics to make sure you have a magnetic card that you can use this on. But the fun does not stop here because it also gives you steady, which can be so valuable against some of these tougher villains that like to throw out status cards. Steady meaning that you need two status cards in order to be fully stunned or confused. And I love when I can get steady. And now he has a few counters to status cards. Steady requires the two cards. And so even if that does happen, we have a ready, right? So every single time when we have the cape down, we get a ready. So if we get stunned, we're fine because we're steady. We need another stun. If another stun does come, we have, we can basic activate and ready with this cape using the magnetic pull ability. And it really just takes a lot to slow Magneto down with his basic activation. Once he has kind of his upgrades out, status cards don't really stop him. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's pretty fun. We're going to talk about his cost curve here in a little bit more in depth in a second, but all of these cards that we have looked at are pretty expensive. So the fact that we have two copies of Master of Magnetism, which is a energy mental double resource in his kit, is a big sigh of relief. It also does have the magnetic trait, so you can shuffle it back in with Asteroid M, and there's it's 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 hard to beat the satisfaction of pulling a uh, master of magnetism double with your magnetic pull ability when you need those resources. Very satisfying because it is magnetic, pull it right into, and because it has the two different resource types, it can count as both a plus one force and a plus one defense if you have your armor out. Now, I did promise at the start of this video that there are cards that I do not like in his kit. So it's time to talk about those. And those are mainly his events. I love his upgrades. Everything that I've talked about before, I think is really fun, awesome. And it, it kind of does boil down to the things that I do not like are his events. The one that I like the most actually is his attack event, Metal Shards. It's a three cost attack event that deals seven damage. It's a little bit under the curve. Typically for three costs, we're looking for eight damage, but you do get a bonus if you defeat an enemy with the attack, you get a tough status card. So there's a little nice bonus. Tufts are great. Tufts are great. It's gonna protect your bubble. It's gonna protect your health. 
really nice to have toughs, but it creates a little bit of an awkward pocket of damage when most minions don't need seven damage to take them out. A lot of minions have like five, and so it feels like a lost efficiency there. There are minions out there with seven, and it's very awesome when you get to snipe them with a uh, metal shards, but I typically think of the, the seven damage as villain damage, and if you're throwing this at the villain, you're not getting that tough status card unless you do push him to that second stage with the attack. So it feels like it's a little bit too much damage for the cost or too much cost. And I, it's just like an awkward like combination of cost damage outside of very specific situations with like these high health minions. At the end of the day, it's a small enough complaint because Magneto is rich enough to not really care too much if something is under the curve but it is something to think about. That being said, I love, love, love setting up the villain to have like six, seven health left on their first stage, knowing that I can pretty reliably recur and obtain this card that can push them to the next stage and get that tough card because of our recursion and our magnetic pull. So we can kind of set ourselves up so that we know we can, you know, hit this card when we do push them or to push them into that next stage. His thwarting event uh, electromagnetic blast is a bit situational and therefore baseline a bit under curve as well. It's a two cost event for three threat removal. It's not great, but it is passable for three main reasons. Magneto is rich. He has a lot of money. And so paying free cards that are under curve, not the end of the world. Two, in solo, three threat seems to be that magic number for a lot of the side schemes. So any more threat can sometimes feel wasteful. And then finally, what makes this card amazing is if you clear a scheme with this card, you can discard an attachment that has a hero action or hero response printed on it. We have talked about in previous videos how strong this can be, but let me reiterate, this is very strong. If you can target like a goblin glider or something that requires a lot of resources to get rid of that's attached to the villain, this easily outpaces the efficiency curve. But a lot of stars do need to align to get the full utilization out of this card. So most of the time, this is just being used as a resource for me. If I have to pay three effective costs to remove three threat, I really do want there to be a attachment out there. Or I just don't have anything better to do with my resources. So it's, it's a little kind of weird, um, just like his attack event. But when the stars align, they're awesome, but most of the time they are not aligning. The final two cards that we're gonna talk about um, in his kit, we're gonna actually kind of talk about and lump them together because they play off of each other fairly heavily. The first is a upgrade called Wrapped in Metal. It's a two cost upgrade that goes on a non-elite minion. The minion then cannot activate and its text box becomes blank. Three resources to cancel out a minion can be pretty good depending on the minion. It does have to be non-elite, which big asterisk there, right? There, there's still the Sentinel Mark 8s and like the weird, crazy high, more challenging non-elite minions. But if they have guard or if they have something that's hindering you from progressing the game state, blanking out the text box can be really nice for three resources. It also is a really fun to combo with Bring It, where you get to draw cards equal to the number of minions engaged with you. I haven't really gotten it to work yet, but it's theoretically fun, I think. Um, maybe not good, but yeah. Uh, Rap the Metal combos with the cheapest card in his kit, his only one cost card, Magnetic Missile, which says to discard a minion with Rap the Metal attached to deal five damage to an enemy and stun it. I like the idea. The execution feels a little bit clunky. It's a lot of setup to get a stun and five damage. First, you need a minion. Then you need to have wrapped in metal to play on the minion. Then you need a missile after that. That's a minion, five effective resources for five damage and a stun. It's a lot of things happening in a specific sequence of events that makes it challenging to pull off. So I've started to think about this as like a nice surprise when it does actually happen, but I've stopped trying to like make it happen, if that makes sense. Like it, it's hard to make it reliably consistent in true solo. Multiplayer, it's easier because there's just more minions, but in true solo, I try and forget about it. And if everything lines up, I get kind of excited. I'm like, oh, that's cool. But it's not something that I'm like going through a hassle to build around, if that makes sense. Because it's just like minion, wrapped in metal. Uh, ma or mag I keep calling it magic missile, magnetic missile, <laughs> magic missile, magic. Um, 
yeah, it's just a lot. It's just a lot and it can be very clunky and I found myself getting outpaced by the villain if I am trying to build around this. And so I typically will wrap something in metal and more often than not, I never touch it ever again. It's just out of the deck. I don't have to deal with it. Sometimes it's nice to get that five damage. Sometimes it's nice to get this done, but Magneto has a lot of ways to protect his health already. So a lot of the times I'm just leaving it out, but that's fine. And this is where we get to move in and talk about his cost curve. It's kind of interesting because he has the 10th most expensive kit in the entire game with 2.15 cost per card, which is pretty high. That being said, Magneto has a lot going for him to combat the high end curve. He has doubles in his kit that he can recur. He, he can actually recur the basic doubles as well with the survivor ability. He can grab those doubles with his effective six hand size with magnetic pull. You can get doubles, you can get just a six card. So you're netting one or potentially even two resources if you hit a master magnetism and a resource generator in his kit for every single card that comes in his kit with his helmet, the magnetic generator. I was thinking that his cost was going to be the biggest issue that Magneto was going to face. And after playing 20-ish games or so with him, I found that it's actually not that big of an issue, especially because a lot of his kit is so situational that I'm passing on playing a lot of his cards most of the time. But when I do play them for like Electromagnetic Blast or Metal Shards to get the full potential, the benefits that you get are so awesome that I'm more than happy to pay the cost. So I'm, I'm looking at most of his events as resources unless I can get that kicker and Metal Shards is kind of the outlier here. Electromagnetic Blast, Wrapped in Metal, all that kind of stuff. If I can get the kicker, I am thrilled to pay the cost. Otherwise, I'm paying for other cards. And some of those other cards are basic cards. So let's talk about some of them that I do like to run in most of my Magneto builds. First up, let's talk about the fact that he likes to discard a lot of cards from his deck with the Magnetic Pull ability. So cards like Digging Deep and White Fox are instantly front of mind, especially because I just like playing these cards. These have responses that you get to add them to your hand or put them into play after they get discarded from the top of your deck. So with Magnetic Pull, discarding cards, we get more resources. I think these are fun, um, especially if you pair them with their previously mentioned Weapon X for more discard synergies. That being said, I've been taking them out of my deck more often than including them recently because White Fox breaks any X-Men tribal synergies that I have. So Utopia, don't get the extra ally slot. If I'm running Uncanny, White Fox breaks that. And Digging Deep doesn't trigger his armor because it's a wild and you need the icon. It's a wild icon, so it doesn't actually trigger his armor stat boost and frequently gives Magneto more money than he really needs. So I'm kind of on the fence with these. I think that the rest of your deck build kind of determines if they should be included. But if they are there and you find yourself too rich, then I would try and check out some resource sinks um, like Lockjaw. I very, very much like Lockjaw running in his deck uh, because if you're not going X-Men Tribal, you can pretty much guarantee that he's going to be in the discard pile because you're discarding so many cards and he can be played from the discard pile. And so if you have a ton of resources in your hand, which is honestly something I've run into with Magneto a lot, that I have a lot of resources, I can sync those into playing Lockjaw from my discard pile. And then there's four resources that I get an ally into play. So it's nice to have some of those resource syncs because if you are running Digging Deeps, even if you're not, there are a lot of turns where I have more money, especially later game with Magneto once a lot of my upgrades are out, that I have more money than I actually need. So I look for resource syncs. Lockjaw is one of those. Uh, he is X-Men traded. So... Everything that deals with X-Men, he's going to enjoy, right? So put X-Men stuff in his deck. But I did want to specifically call out Cerebro um, with the, because it combos pretty well with the survivor response. If you have an ally in the top three cards of your discard pile, when you flip down to Alter Ego, you shuffle those cards back in, and then you can Cerebro them right back if they are X-Men allies. So there is a lot of synergy there. If you have a psionic ally on the table, you get to search your entire deck so you can guarantee which card. And so like putting like uh, Professor X on the top of your discard pile, flipping down, recurring X, playing X gives you a safe trip down, which is pretty fun. And so there's a lot of like sequencing events that I was talking and alluding to earlier that make Magneto just very 
very fun. Um, and th that's some of them. And the sequencing events combine his kit with a lot of these gray X-Men supports. But yeah, let's uh let's talk about some aspects. Let's talk about Magneto's best aspects. And I'm gonna rank these in terms of what he's least good into best, but the bottom three are very, very close in my opinion. But Magneto is flexible and can adjust his playstyle to be pretty successful in any aspect. So it's kind of who are you fighting? And he's gonna be better in one of these than the other based on the villain matchup. But I think I've kind of I think I've figured it out. I think I've kind of solidified my opinion in which one overall he is best or he's worst to best in uh number one is not a contest he is number one is number one um in fourth place his worst aspect i have aggression i do like leaning even more into the discarding and triggering white fox and digging deep when you have allies like gold balls you have cards like no quarter that deal with discarding but i think that that's actually more fun than it is powerful he can handle minions pretty well so cards like angela are looking for trouble to summon more minions to wrap them in metal is pretty good but we have actually gotten more minion summoning cards outside of the aggression aspect so that leg up with the red aspect is not as good as it used to be and it does need to be said that he can get aerial so hone technique dive bomb is not out of the question and with his economy it can be pretty easy to pay for once the puzzle pieces are on the table. So with that being in mind, in the right situation, aggression can be much higher than ranked fourth on this list if you are leaning into that strategy and you have like maybe a high minion scenario. So while he can be awesome in aggression, I think he can be even stronger more consistently in the other aspects, if just by a bit. Number three, we have Justice. Magneto loves Alter Ego and in X-Men, mutants love alter ego right so combine that with everything that magneto wants to be doing and flipping down and also all the mutant support with danger room with cerebro with moira with um i'm forgetting all of them at this point but weapon x like there's a lot of alter ego supports that mutants have access to and so justice just facilitates more threat removal confuses to flip down he's a very good thwarter already he has a baseline two thwarts he has a free ready we potentially can thwart for five just off, his, off of his basic activations once we have his cape and his armor out so that can be really fun to pair with one way or another which combos super well with electromagnetic blast and his high cost curve so one way or another find a side scheme put it into play draw three cards if that side scheme has three we can electromagnetic blast, clear it, take out a villain attachment. That's a very satisfying play line. Or we can just thwart it down. It, one way or another here, we can clear that side scheme. Um, so Magneto can be very successful in justice. Um, yeah. Number two, I have protection. This is my favorite way to play. Uh, to the surprise of nobody, right? Uh, Magneto can play green in a lot of different ways. Just like he can play aggression, justice, in a lot of different ways as well. Um, the best way that I think that he can play this is the always ready kind of archetype where he just ready up and activates multiple times. Uh, so like what doesn't kill me, ready up activates. And if you do this after your uh, magnetic pull and you have stat boost, if you discarded a strength or a, a punch resource, then you have three attacks. So now if you play a what doesn't kill me, you get to ready up and attack again for three. He does have aerial from his cape, so you can play ever vigilant, remove some threat, ready up. Um, you can play repurpose if you wanted to ready up and just attack more. Um, I think that the always ready strategy with Magneto can be very, very good. And because of his like evenly distributed stat line, as well as being able to increase that with his armor, you do have a lot of flexibility, which is, you know, what you need in true solo and so being able to ready being able to do damage and thwarting just very 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 good very consistent the other way that he can play which i think is a little bit more fun but a little bit slower probably not as good is just leaning into that perfect defense and what's really good about this is with green you have all of your fun combos that you can do but magneto can pretty much guarantee that he does not take any damage with his magnetic bubble and so not only if any damage slips through will get placed on that bubble it also gives them another source of retaliate so if you're running the dauntless if you're running electrostatic armor and you're running the bubble right there if you defend that's three damage that you're throwing back at the attacking enemy so that's 
really good. He also has ways with like uh, metal shards to get tufts, which is going to protect the bubble even further. And I just like the flexibility of defending with him, knowing that I have a free ready in the hero phase with magnetic pull if I have his cape out. So the detriment of defending, exhausting to defend, kind of gone because you get that free ready in the hero phase. And finally, the best aspect, and I don't really even think it's a competition, is leadership. That's mainly because this card exists. Um, Exponent leadership is just simply amazing. Yeah, it's just good. Pair that with his insane economy, which helps pay for all the allies. It is a winning strategy. Um, X-Men leadership is very, 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 very good. And he came with even more X-Men cards. And so it just got better. So X-Men leadership, Magneto leadership, top of the top, top of the uh, tier chart. I don't even think that that's a competition. The community had him ranked with leadership as number one. The other three pretty close with aggression leading the pack. For the power ranking, the community voted him into the A tier. And before I rank him, I do want to talk about an upgrade that I'm making to the tier list. And let me just kind of talk about tier list, right? Because I have an idea in my head of what something is when I say it is a D tier. And this is not tied to Marvel Champions. If I'm looking at any tier list and I see D tier, I kind of have a, an association of what that means. And because I am ranking heroes relative to each other, it was a bit hard placing heroes into lower tiers, which I think are still really good heroes. They're just not as good as others. And I think that gave them the perception of being bad. And that is not what I wanted to convey whatsoever. If you are in like the D tier, that doesn't mean you are bad. It's just that you're not as good as some of your other of the other heroes. And so I'm actually going to be updating my tier list like categories so that they more accurately reflect what I think each category is. So first category, I'm just calling the top five. It is the top five heroes in the game. So these are going to be the top five heroes. No more, no less. Category two, these are the greats. These are the all-time greats. Um, Hall of Heroes right here, the great heroes. Uh, the middle tier, solid heroes. Still really, really good. Can handle themselves. Fourth tier, they're more situational, right? So they can be amazing heroes, but they have to be in that right situation. And then that last tier, I'm just calling at least they're fun, right? Because it's Marvel Champions, they're fun. They may not be the strongest, but they are fun. But with that new category, with that new ranking, I'm going to drop Magneto into the greats category. And he's going to be fitting right in between X-23 and Angel. Really, really strong. I liked Magneto a lot more than I thought I was. When I initially saw Magneto, I thought he was going to be a fairly non-exciting hero to play. And I think I was wrong. I think, I think that Magneto is a pleasant surprise and he was a lot of fun to play. He has a relatively straightforward mechanics and you can combine that with some pretty brain burning sequencing decisions. And I think a new player can pick him up and be very successful and a more experienced players can still find satisfying gameplay with Magneto when trying to manipulate all of his recursion abilities and access to the money bags that he does have. My initial concern with him was his high cost curve, but with his ability to get extra cards, resource generators than his kit, recurring his doubles, I'm happy to say he's much better off in this category than I was initially thinking. He has amazing, amazing upgrades that can trigger off of him getting richer, which is incredibly nice, especially when he gets to ready with his cape, allowing him to be what true solo play needs the most, flexible. Where he sometimes falls short for me is those very situational events. There's weird pockets of threat removal or damage that are overcosted if you don't trigger the extra kicker, and that can make them hard to justify playing, especially when only one hero is at the table and you're just seeing less of those minions or attachments that those extra kickers actually deal with. That being said, if you are able to pull off an electromagnetic blast and clear off a nasty villain attachment, you're getting a huge efficiency boost and it's really nice to happen if it does. And this is where we're going to transition into talking a little bit more about multiplayer because I think a lot of those situational events get less situational when we add more heroes to the table and therefore we get to see more encounter cards because everyone draws an encounter card every single turn. So in higher player account games, we're going to see more minions so that we can wrap them in metal or clobber them with metal shards and get our tough status cards. We're going to see more attachments, which we can then set up to remove with our electromagnetic blast. So I think Magneto's main detriment 
in his cards are how situational they can be. So when you add more players to the table, the situational cards get less situational because there's more opportunities to trigger them. And so I think he becomes even stronger in multiplayer. He can play any aspect very well and he can fit into the team's makeup however he needs to, playing pretty much any role that the team needs. And I think that Magneto's true solo strengths do not get diluted with more players at the table and his weaknesses and situational triggers get lessened, making him a very solid multiplayer. All in all, he surprised me. I was, okay, relative, I'm excited for all Marvel Champions characters. I'm just excited when new characters come out, right? Um, relatively speaking, Magneto was not on like my top tier. I'm super pumped for this hero list. That being said, he's a lot more fun. There's a lot more sequencing decision. There's a lot more strategy involved in playing Magneto than I was initially thinking. I thought it was just gonna be like, we have a lot of money, we're gonna play. And there is that. He has a lot of money. He's going to play powerful cards. He's going to be good. But the sequencing, trying to stack your discard pile, figuring out exactly how you can manipulate. Do I run Digging Deep? Do I run White Foxes? Am I going to be flipping down triggering Weapon X? Do I need to play Magnetic Bubble? But I also want to flip down and play Weapon X and I can't have both of those on the table. There's a lot of interesting decisions and his strategy will shift and change throughout the game based on where the villain is and who that villain is. So I was very, very happy with Magneto. I thought he was a lot more fun than I thought. Not my favorite in the wave. We'll talk about that in a future video, but very, very good. Anyways, what did you think about Magneto? Did you enjoy him? Did you think that he is as strong as I did? Let me know down in the comments. I look forward to hearing what you all say. Until then, hope everyone has a fantastic day and we'll see you next time. Peace.